Hi everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on the ECOS astrophotography toolset. My name is Remco Hecker and I am a beginning astrophotographer. And I've been using ECOS for a while now and I wanted to do a short series of tutorials on how to use ECOS for astrophotography. So that's why I started this channel, 52 Degrees Night Sky. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to control your mount from ECOS. I wanted to start out showing everything you need for an average astrophotography session, but I'm not going to get into the real advanced settings and troubleshooting in this video. I want to keep it relevant to people just starting out with ECOS. I will, however, show you one technique that is technically part of the alignment module, but since it is the technique I myself use the most, I think it can't hurt to show it to you in this video as well. Now I am going to assume that you've already set up your equipment and connected it to an indie server. If that's not the case and you want some help with that, don't worry. I'll be releasing videos on those topics pretty soon, so just keep an eye on this channel. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Here we are in KSTARS. And for those of you that have never heard of it, KSTARS is this free planetarium software. It is incredibly extensive and it has a complete astrophotography toolset built into it called ECOS. And what's more, it is completely free to use. The first thing you need to do is you need to connect KSTARS to the indie server where you've connected your mount. You can do that by opening up ECOS with this icon on the top toolbar. For this demonstration, I'll be using the simulator, but you need to select your own profile to which you've connected your mount. And all I need to do now is press start. Let's just minimize the indie panel and ECOS for now, and let's focus on KSTARS. Because your mount is now connected, you'll see this red indicator that's telling you where your telescope is pointing. So let's first unpark your mount. I like to use the menu underneath my right mouse button. Here it says telescope simulator, but that will change depending on the type of mount you've connected. Normally it will list the name of your telescope driver. Now unpark. Now that my mount's unparked, I can navigate to any object just by hovering over it with my mouse and then press the right mouse button. Telescope simulator, go to, and you can see the telescope moving from its parked position all the way to the target. In my case, M31. Another way you can control your telescope in K-STARS is by using the telescope toolbar. You can activate it by going to the settings menu, select toolbar shown, and then activate the telescope toolbar. And now you can see that a couple of new options have become available on the toolbar. Once you have that activated, it is pretty easy to move your mouse over any object, for instance M39, and double click. You can now see that I have selected M39 here in the upper right corner. And with an object selected, what you can do is go to the slew telescope to this focused object button. And here you see that my mount is moving to the next target. Now in the same telescope toolbar, you also have some park and unpark buttons. Another way is by using the mount control panel that's underneath this button. Here you have full manual control over slewing and you can also type in any specific coordinate that you are looking for, both in RA and DAC, altitude azimuth or uh, hour angle and declination. Here there's also an option to find a target, but let me show you a simpler way of doing that. 
You can close the mount control panel by pressing the same button you did to open it here on top on the, in the top toolbar. When you are in the planetarium view, you can just press Ctrl F and the find window comes up. Here you can search any target, for instance M31 again. And now there are two things I can do. First I can confirm the result by pressing enter or clicking OK. And you can then see that KSTARS now navigates the view all the way to M35. Now it navigates the view, it doesn't navigate the telescope there. But with M31 selected, I can press again on the slew telescope button and then the telescope will move to M31. But there's another thing I could have done. I could press the details button and then select the center in telescope button. And now you will see my telescope navigating around the meridian and arriving at M31. Oh, before we go into ECOS and see what mount control options are available there, I just thought of one more trick here in KSTARS uh, that I can show you. KSTARS has the ability to let you set bookmarks or flags in the sky so that you can easily find your way back. And to access those options, you open the flag menu through tools and flags. And here you can enter the details of a target you want to uh, uh, navigate back to or you want to bookmark. And as you can see, I already set one up. Uh, this one is for an astrophotography project that I'm currently working on. And what I can do is I can just select it and press the center in telescope button. And you can see that KSTARS is now slewing my telescope to exactly those coordinates. And I always like to do this for the center coordinates of an astrophotography project uh, that I'm working on. Now there's an even better way and more accurate way of uh, um, making sure that you get consistent, uh, consistent coordinates on a multi-night astrophotography shoot, but I'll show you that later on in the video. And that's about it for the basic navigation. In practice, you will probably only use one of these methods, but it doesn't hurt to know the other ones as well. And now let me show you some of the options that are available to us in the mount module in ECOS. So let's navigate to the mount module. At first, it seems like there's a lot of information here, but honestly, it's not that bad. Let's just take a quick look together. Here on top you see the numbers corresponding with your telescope and with your guide scope. You have set these numbers up when you were creating your first profile. They won't change in between sessions, so if they were good before, they probably still are. But it never hurts to double check. So just see if these numbers for aperture and focal length are correct for your setup. On the right you have again a button that opens up the mount control that we saw earlier. And if you want to close it, you have to press the mount control button again. Underneath you have the tracking buttons. You can see if your mount is currently tracking an object. You can turn it off and then you can turn it on again. You can also park and unpark your mount here. In the middle, you can see the coordinates that your mount is pointing to at this point in all the popular formats. And underneath that are the options for the automated meridian flip. The first option is the check mark, which confirms that you want to flip your mount automatically when your target passes the meridian. And the dialog box next to it determines how far your target needs to pass the meridian before the meridian flip will take place. I have mine set to point 15 hours which is 9 minutes and if you have enabled the meridian flip beneath there is a counter that shows you how long it will take before ECOS will initiate the meridian flip. Next there are some options that have to do with your mount model. Now this is a topic I won't get into in this video 
uh, but perhaps I'll do a video on it later on. The thing I will say about your mount model is that uh, sometimes when you uh, are having trouble navigating to an object or even tracking your object, uh, there might be something wrong with your mount model and this is the place where you can clear it. And then all the way over to the far right, there are some options where you can enable limits for the mount movement. For instance, a maximum and a minimum altitude or a maximum hour angle. And this option basically keeps your mount from moving more than two hours past the meridian. That way you can make sure that your telescope and camera gear won't bump into your tripod or get damaged. Now you need to see for yourself if two hours really is the maximum for your kit. You can also decrease that number, but two hours is the most that you can go beyond the meridian if you have this option enabled. This setting really has saved me a couple of times when the automated meridian flip did not go so well. Um, before I was using this feature, I, I've actually had this happen where the meridian flip didn't go well and my telescope uh, bumped into my tripod. Um, but since I've activated this setting, I never had a problem with that any ever again. And the last feature that's available to us on this page is the auto park option. Here you in this dialog box, you can determine at what time your mount should uh, uh, park automatically. And then all the way on the right, you can enable it by pressing the play button. And you will see a big counter telling you how long before the auto park will be initiated. Now, before I wrap up this video, I wanted to show you one more feature, which is technically a feature in the alignment module. Uh, and I'll show it to you when I'm doing a video on that as well. But since I'm using it to navigate my mount, I figured it would be a good idea to show it to you in this video as well. So let's navigate to the alignment module. And if you have plate solving uh, set up correctly, you can press the load and slew button here, and you can select an image that you have taken on a, a previous night. And ECOS will now plate solve this image and will navigate your telescope to exactly the same position Now here I'm using a simulator, so it finds it pretty quickly, but in reality it might take a couple of iterations. But once ECOS has, uh, has plate solved your image, it will send your telescope to exactly the same position as where you've uh, captured your previous images. And this is basically a feature that is indispensable to me when doing multi-night astrophotography sessions. And that's pretty much it for now. I am going to do more videos on the other modules in ECOS, so if you are interested in that, keep an eye on the channel. If you found this video useful in any way, consider giving it a like. And if you have any questions or comments on the things that I've shown you in this video, uh, feel free to post them in the comments below and let me know what you think. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.